it's Jennifer from Fiberflux. In this video, I'm going to show you how to crochet the marled spruce cowl. This is a fun to crochet stitch. We're going to be using the basket weave stitch for this one, and it's a soothing kind of heathered green. There's like some like a sage green and white kind of heathered look. So it's a really like soft, cozy, soothing kind of cowl for winter. And it's really easy to stitch up. We're gonna make a nice long rectangle and then seam it up kind of invisibly. And so the finished piece measures about seven and a half inches wide. And then it has a circumference of about 32 inches around. However, you can customize this by making this a little bit wider if you want to. You can make this longer or shorter. You can um, kind of make it more snug up around the neck or you could even keep going and make it a scarf as well. So let's get started. For this project, you're gonna need a pair of scissors, a tapestry needle, a tape measure is super helpful to get the length that you need. We're gonna be using a six millimeter J crochet hook. This is my Furls Odyssey, in case you're wondering, I'll put the link down below for this. And then for our yarn, this is a beautiful kind of heathered green and white. This is called Vitalana Lofty DK. This is one of the Knit Crate in-house yarns. It's super soft. It's kind of like a chain and it looks like an I-cord when you look at it close up. And the colorway that I'll be using is mistletoe. Now I'm gonna be using two skeins of this. Each one of these skeins is 274 yards or 250 meters. It does come in dye lots and it's DK weight. The fiber content is 48% merino, 20% alpaca, 32% organic cotton. If you need to substitute yarn, I will put the link down below to Knit Crate so you can kind of look at their yarn. They have a little like yarn section of their site. But if you need to substitute, look for any DK weight yarn that is about 548 yards total is what we'll be using for this. So let's get started. Okay, so I have my hook in my yarn, and I just wanted to say as a side note, the yarns that come in skeins like this, um, I wound mine into a cake, or you could also uh, wind it into a ball, just so uh, you know if you have a skein like I showed previously. So what we're going to do is grab our yarn and our hook and begin. So what we wanna do, and let me just zoom right in so you can see what I'm doing here. We're gonna put a slip knot on our hook to start. So wrap the yarn around your fingers to make a loop, Bring that yarn behind the loop, reach in with your hook, bring up a loop and tighten. You now have a slip knot on the hook. Next, we're going to do our starting chain. Now our starting chain is going to be 34 to get the dimensions I mentioned previously, but if you want to change the width of your uh, project, what you can do is work a multiple of six plus four. If you're not familiar with that, that simply means when you're doing your starting chain, you're gonna go six plus six plus six plus six plus six and so forth until you get the width that you like and then add four more chains onto that. So that will change the width depending on what you need. So like I mentioned, we're gonna do a starting chain of 34. To make a chain, wrap the yarn around the hook and bring it through the loop. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. So here is our starting chain, and if yours is a little bit tight, I get this question a lot, if yours is looking pretty tight, you want to be able to work stitches into these chains. So if they're really tight, try going up a hook size for the starting chain only, and then come back down to the J for the rest of your project. Next, we're going to begin row one. And what we're going to do is work a double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook to begin. So the loop one here does not count. So go one, two, three and four in that fourth chain from the hook, work a double crochet. To make a double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, insert the hook into that chain, bring up a loop, you'll have three loops on your hook, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the first two loops, wrap yarn around the hook, bring it through the last two loops. To finish off the row for row one, we're going to work a double crochet into each one of these chains all the way across. So go ahead and work 
double crochet in the next chain and the next chain and every chain all the way across. I'm going to go ahead and work my double crochets and when we rejoin we will move on to row two. And then for row two what we're going to do is chain two, one, two and turn our work. So what we're going to do in each of these first three double crochets that you see, not this post here, this is kind of connected to our turning chain, but these first three here that you see, we're going to work a front post double crochet in each of these first three stitches, okay? So if you're not familiar with this, it's pretty easy to make a front post double crochet, wrap the yarn around the hook, and then what you're going to do is when you have a stitch, you have something, it has parts to it. So it has a post, which is this column, and then this little loop at the top is the stitch where you normally work it in, but we're going to go around this post, okay? So wrap the yarn around the hook, come up under the post like that with your hook, wrap the yarn around the hook, bring it back through the way you came, and then you'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Okay? And we're going to do that in these three stitches here. Okay? So front post double crochet into the next stitch. And front post double crochet into the next stitch. Just like that. So it gives a little bit of a different look and it also makes it a little bit more uh, 3D looking. So that's kind of what we need for our basket weave look. Okay, so the next part is we're going to work a back post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So that's kind of like the reverse of what we just did. So to do that, we're going to wrap the yarn around the hook, and then instead of going up under, we're going to go to the back of our piece and come up with our hook, go over top of that post, and back down. Wrap the yarn around the hook. Bring it back through the way you came. You'll have three loops on the hook. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. Now do that two more times. So wrap the yarn around the hook, come in from the back, go over that post. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it back through. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the first two loops. Wrap yarn around hook, bring it through the last two loops. And then we're going to do that one more time. Just like that, okay? So when we see them side by side, you can see the front post gives you like a, a longer column like look, and the back post produces this little ridge here across the, the middle of what we have so far. Okay, so for the rest of our row, we're just gonna keep doing the same thing. In groups of three, work a front post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Just like that. Now work a back post double crochet in the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Okay, starting to get some nice texture here. All right, work a front post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. And then work a back post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. All right. Work a front post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. Whoops, drop my loop there. One, two, get a little bit more yarn, and three. Now work a back post in each of the next three stitches. One, two, and three. And then work a front post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. One, two, three, 
And then you'll have three left plus that turning chain. So finish off by working a back post double crochet in those last three stitches. One, two, and three. Okay, and then to finish the row, we're gonna locate our turning chain, which is off to the side here. And in that topmost turning chain, just work a double crochet. Okay, so locate the top of the turning chain and then just work a double crochet right into the top chain of that, okay? So row two is complete. So for row three, all we're gonna do is repeat row two. So chain two, one, two, and turn your work. Now work a front post double crochet in each of those first three stitches. Whoops. One, two, and three. And then work a back post double crochet in each of the next three stitches. So one, two, and three. Okay, so you're just gonna repeat across. Do three front posts, double crochets, three back posts, double crochets, three front posts, double crochets, three back posts, and so forth across. Okay, so we just did three back posts, so we're ready to do three front posts. So one, two, three. All right, so just keep repeating across, and then when we rejoin, we're gonna finish up this row and move on to the next part, okay? So work three front posts, three back posts, three front posts, three back posts, and so forth. Okay, we're coming up to the end of row three, and I'm just working that last back post double crochet. And then once again, we're gonna finish off the row by working a double crochet into the topmost chain of our turning chain here. And so you should have a nice strip of some good texture happening. So what we're gonna do for the next two rows is kind of the opposite of what we've been doing and that will give us that wonderful basket weave look. So what we need to do for row four is to chain two. One, two, and turn. And so as you can see, we have some front post double crochets. You can tell because they're nice long columns. And so what we're gonna do is the opposite of that. So we're going to do three back post double crochets. So one, two, and three, okay? So again, we're gonna do the opposite of what we've been doing. And for this one, we're gonna work three, the next set of three, we're gonna work three front post double crochets. So one, two, and three, okay? So as you can see, you're, we're already starting to get some of that like woven look. And as you work more and more rows and your piece grows in length, you will start to see more of that woven look, okay? So we just did three front post double crochets. Now we're gonna switch and do three back post double crochets, okay? So one, two, and three. Okay, so keep continuing across your row. So we just did three back posts, now do three front posts, then three back posts, then it's basically the opposite of what you see. So if you see these like ridges, you're gonna work your front posts. If you see these columns, you're gonna work three back posts, okay? So just keep in this, this manner going across, and when we get to the end of row four, we'll rejoin and move on to row five. All right, coming up to the end of row four, I'm just working my last front post double crochet. And then we're gonna do the same thing we've been doing to finish off the row. Just work a double crochet in the topmost chain of that turning chain that you see. Okay, so we have some nice texture and I'm gonna chain two, one, two, and turn to move on to row five. Row five, once again, we're just gonna be repeating row four. So what we did for row four, we'll do once more. Okay, so the first three stitches that we see are back post double crochets. So begin by working three back post double crochets into those first three stitches. So back post double crochet, back post double crochet, 
back post double crochet and then in the next three you're going to work three front post double crochet stitches. So we're, again we're just repeating row four. So three front post and then three back post. Okay so let's continue doing this across and then we'll finish up row five as well. Okay so once again work three back post to start, then three front posts, then three back posts, then three front posts, all the way across. Just coming up to that last stitch here of row five. And then once again, we're gonna finish off the row like we've been doing all along, working that double crochet into the topmost chain of the turning chain. So just do that. Okay, so we worked five rows here and we have some really pretty texture. I'm loving how this um, kind of marled yarn is working with the basket weave stitch. It looks really, really neat. So what you want to do to continue with your piece is to keep working, and now let me zoom out so you can see this a little bit better, is to keep working rows two through five over and over and over again until your piece is as long as you would like it to be or until you run out of yarn, whatever comes first. Um, and I did talk about some dimensions at the beginning of the video, but you can grab your uh, tape measure if you wanna kind of measure as you go along as well. So keep repeating rows two through five. Now you can back up the video as many times as you need. You can use the slow-mo feature if you'd like, but repeat rows two through five over and over and over again until your piece is as long as you would like it to be. So when we rejoin, I'm gonna have a little bit more length on this and we're gonna learn how to seam it all together. Okay, just working that very last stitch of the row. And I've come to the point where I don't have quite enough yarn to keep going, but I saved just enough to seam it together, okay? So what we're gonna do now is before we take our hook out, I'm gonna pull, oh, about two feet or so of yarn and cut. And then what I'm gonna do is fasten off. Okay, so we're gonna use this nice long tail. And this is probably more than enough yarn, but I like to have a little bit more than run out. Okay, and we're just gonna pull it through and fasten off. Now, we're gonna go down to the other end. If you have any other tails, weave those in now. We're gonna weave in our tail down here. And where I switched uh, skeins of yarn, I've already woven those tails in. Okay, so we're just gonna go in one direction with our tail and then come back in the other direction. And this is reversible, this basket weave stitch. So you wanna sort of stay in the middle of your stitches, not go really too far on either side. And it really does blend well um, into itself. So it's not a super huge deal. So then what we wanna do is bring our piece together. And just as a side note, I worked my rows and I got about 32 inches long for mine. Okay, so we're gonna get our long tail. And we're gonna bring the edges together. Grab your tapestry needle. And again, I, I probably made my tail a little long, but it's totally fine if you need to trim it just to make it more manageable. And then we're gonna bring our edges together. Now, what I would do is line up the boxes. So you wanna stitch the first two boxes together and stitch the second two boxes together and so forth, okay? That way when you wear it, the seam, um, we're gonna use the whip stitch, but the seam will be even more invisible and, and the uh, boxes will be lined up like they are in the rest of the piece so that there will be more of a consistent look uh, throughout the piece, okay? So line up the first two boxes and you can use, sort of use your finger as a marker to sort of pinch it. But we're, we're gonna sandwich them together and we're just gonna whip stitch them. The whip stitch is a really easy, uh, kind of invisible stitch, and it's just kind of a spiral through your work. So we're just gonna whip stitch all the way across, and just take your time with this part because when you spend a lot of time on your crochet projects, you wanna make sure your finished work is nice and neat. So now we're at the next set of boxes, so just sort of line them up with your hands and hold them together and stitch the next set of boxes, okay? So just do this all the way across with your tail, and then once we get towards the end, we'll rejoin and wrap it up.
Okay, just coming up to the end, working this last few stitches, and I like to sort of come around the edge just a little bit so that the, the pieces don't have like a dip in them. It has a nice straight across line. Okay, so when you get to your last stitch, pull it almost all the way through, leaving a loop, and then send your needle through that loop and pull to tighten. And then what we're gonna do is without taking your tapestry needle out, just weave in that last tail. And so just go in one direction. And what we're gonna do next is turn our piece right side out. My needle fell out, so let me re. Um, we're gonna turn our piece right side out so that we can see what it looks like. Um, now our whip stitch with this yarn, it's pretty invisible, um, but we're gonna hide it even more by turning it back the other way. Okay, so once you get your tail woven in, just trim. And then you can kind of stretch things out and you can see how our boxes are nice and lined up. So when we turn it right side out, everything looks nice and neat, okay? So our cow is complete. It looks pretty. It's a nice soothing, kind of comfy sort of cow for the winter. And that is how you crochet the marled spruce cowl. Thanks so much for watching and be sure and click the subscribe button to get all the latest Fiberflux video updates. Thanks again.